Maine, a place known for its many lakes, streams, and ponds, its long list of beautiful wildlife, and miles and miles of back road through dense forest without a block of civilization around. Join me as I show you what this great state has to offer. From foraging to fishing and wildlife conservation, we'll do it all. I live my life loving everything nature has to provide here. Stick around and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. At the very least, I hope you enjoy following along. Welcome to Wild Maine. So we got a bunch of snow outside and uh, we're going to be taking the pup out for the first time in his life seeing snow. He looks kind of sad just sitting there, but you can see that he's uh, he's not that sad. He's excited. Ready to go outside? We're going to see what he thinks of snow. Ready to go outside? Come on! I'd say he's a little uh, entertained there. Just gonna go check the game camera. See if they got any deer on there. Ruger, come on! Come on! Let's go! Come on! So entertained with that thing, it don't matter. Like, nope, I'm content. I'm not listening to you, Dad. Come on, let's go. Come on. Haven't seen anything for tracks aside from. One set of coyote tracks. But critters like to run up along this stream that's just past these hemlock trees. So we'll see what there is up there. And nothing for tracks here today. So we'll go see what I got on the camera and head on back home. Ruger, come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on.
This way. There's something living in there that he likes to smell of. Okay, let's go. So we're just about to where my camera is. And it looks like somebody moved my scent tag lower. Oh, here's one of the scent tags that Ruger seems to like to smell of. What is it, buddy? But it looks like somebody lowered one of my scent tags. Unless a deer pulled it down. So, the camera's there. Scent tag. Unless it's just the way to the snow. It was up there. Oh, to be so simple minded. So I'm out at this little, it's not even really a pond, it's only like two feet deep, the deepest part. It's an old beaver flow. You can see right there, the old beaver lodge. Water used to be quite high, but there's no beavers in here anymore. However, the other day, when I was down here walking by, I noticed a muskrat in here. So, I did a little digging around to see what I could find, see if there's any more sign of them, and there is. So, right here, there's a uh, little hole that goes down into the bottom of the uh, the water. It's kind of mucky now because I put a trap in there. I put a little colony trap, messed it all up. But I put it right in the run where they're going into there. And uh, muskrats are very habitual creatures. They will stick to those runs no matter what. You could have a dead muskrat and a 110 set in one of those runs and they'll push it aside just to make sure that they go down the same run they always do. So I set one there. Um, I set one at another little run. And then I set one at a big run they have going up into the bank where they've chewed a whole bunch of roots going up in there. It's nice and deep. I'll show that here in a second just so you can see, you know, what I mean. But here's the first one. Then here's the second one. You can see how there's a run cut down into the bottom. Um, I'm lucky the water is pretty clear, but a lot of places, if you have some more solid ground on the bottom of the, the pond, you can actually walk along and feel it with your foot. You'll feel that it's nice and flat, and then it drops off you know, a little bit wider than your boot, about the same width of your boot, and that's about the size of the, the run that they'll be using. So you can stick uh, colony traps in there, which are very effective. You can get a couple of them in a colony trap, or you can set a 110 in there. 120 whatever you want to use but yeah, I like using the colony traps they're super effective you can pile a couple of rats in there no problem and uh, anyway so you can see how this little pond is pretty well frozen I mean it's obviously not completely frozen just a skim of ice but this is a great way to tell what's warmer than other sections so right here it's really not any deeper than there actually right there is quite a bit deeper but right here leads up to that run with the hole going down into the bank and it's you know it's completely open well, that's because you got the warm bodies coming in and out of that little hole there heating the water up making it so it isn't completely frozen yet so this is wide open up there is wide open because you got an inlet but also to the left of it's where trap number two is and then over there is where trap number three is So just a, a thing to look for, you're going to have warm water, leaving it open, 
and running water. You got your inlet, outlet. We'll also make open water. So that's where your 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 thinner ice is going to be later on in the season too. But early on in the season, it's it's nice to tell. You know where things are moving before things freeze up. So you have to really go looking. Right now, it's given to you, and that's muddy because the dogs over there having a heyday in the the water. Here's one of the runs. I actually got to push that back down a little bit. The water's a little more shallow here than I would have liked, but you can see how it's an obvious run. Cut out of the bottom there. You got a small one there. Doesn't look like it's been used at all lately. So I didn't bother setting anything there. Because five feet away, you got this nice run. I mean, that colony trap's just about level with the ground around it. Runs straight out. You can see how they've chewed roots right there. It goes up under the bank. So. If I had to, if I had to guess one of these is going to catch more than any of the others, I'm going to say this one right here. So, you got one there, one over there, one here. All right, so it's the next day. We're going to get ready. Head out and see if we got any uh, muskrats in the colony traps. Right, Ruger? You ready? He's like, yeah, Dad. The door's right there. Open it. Oh. Oh. You ready? You ready? So as you can see, it iced up a little bit more from yesterday. You got a light dusting of snow. First one's right over here. You can see it iced back up over the top. Water dropped a little bit. You see that nice run. There's nothing in there, but you see that nice run in the bottom. Check the second one. See, there's the second run that I was talking about yesterday that I didn't place anything in. There's that nice deep channel. I don't see any rats in there. So look like looks like that's a bust for today. And we'll go check the third one.
He's gonna learn real quick, I feel like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, how's that, buddy? <laughs> Ice is pretty solid right there, though. We walked right across it. So, I don't know if it means anything, but that big white spot right there is a big air bubble. Which usually, that'll mean something dying under the ice there. But, we'll see. Well, would you look at that? Air bubble means what? Let's pull this guy up. Good amount of ice is formed here. Not the biggest one in the world, but muskrat number one. And one thing you'll notice is that a lot of times when they die, they'll bite onto the edge of the trap, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt. But there's muskrat number one, just a little guy. So there you have it, muskrat number one after one night of traps being out. Hopefully we'll get some more. That one's pretty small. I've had them four or five times bigger than this. But softest fur you're ever gonna find. Get a little bit of meat out of it at the same time. Not much, but there we go. So a great way to dry these suckers out when they're wet and you got a fresh layer of snow, just roll them around in the snow. The snow absorbs a lot of the moisture. Look at that. Beautiful fur. Now let's see what Ruger thinks about his first muskrat. Come here. Come on. Oh, he's a little leery of the ice now. Come here. What is it? 